Welcome back to another episode of Nap Motorsports and today I'm going to teach you how to properly check and adjust the shim on your 99 to 2005 Miata motor. So for those of you unaware, from 1990 to 1997, at least this is American market, Miatos all came with hydraulic lifters. So the buckets that go above the valve spring were actually hydraulic and filled with oil, or they would get filled with oil as the car ran, and that would control your shim height and all that, and you, you know, building an older head is pretty easy because you don't have to check shims, you don't have to order any shims, you just clean them, put them together, and it's at the proper shim value. So in 1999, they switched, so BP4W and the BP6D, the VVT heads, are all shim over bucket style assembly. So there's the bucket, like what I just showed you, here. And on top of the bucket, there is a little cavity where a shim will fit. The shims look like this, they look like little quarters essentially, and they slot right into that piece, and they sit in there, and that, these shims are all different heights, and depending on what shim you put in here, these are all different thicknesses that you can buy from Mazda. So depending on what part you put in there, you can adjust your cam to lifter bucket or shim bucket clearance. There is a spec from Mazda. It is 7 to 9 thou on the intake side and 11 to 13 thou on the exhaust side. So this applies even if you've never taken your engine apart. If you have like a high mileage Miata motor or I don't even know, 60,000 miles on something, it's worth checking. It's very quick to actually check on a car. And if it's wrong, it's worth adjusting because you could be losing power and it's just your engine's not running at tip top. And that's, you know, you always want these engines to run as long as possible. So this video, I'm going to show it to you on a workbench, just how to do it, because that's if you're building ahead, that's kind of how you're going to do it. Uh, it does correlate to doing it in the car. So you can do it with the car timed. You just got to spin the crank over instead of spinning the cams but I will show you the whole process and kind of how you would go around doing that. So. so what I have here is a VVT head. Back from the machine shop, already assembled, at least springs, retainers, all that stuff. The buckets are just sitting in here as they should. And as you can see, there are no shims on any of these. So I've popped the shims out. You can do it with a little flat head or sometimes just set a magnet on top and twist. And you know, all, all that's holding it in is like an oil film on the shim buckets. So sometimes they're a little stubborn, but just set them in. I put all the little openings facing the inside. That way when I go to remove them later, I can easily pop them out without taking anything out. Obviously these are rotational and the orientation doesn't matter when it's running. It's just like a assembly thing I do. So shims are all out and I have the shims in a container all in order of where they came out. So this would be your intake row and this would be your exhaust row. So I have intake one through eight, exhaust one through eight. And I have no idea what the shim clearances are now because this head has been machined, the valves have been lapped or ground, and the, the valve installed height could be different than what it was when I took it apart. So the disassembly values don't really matter. What I'm going to do is measure each shim with just a pair of like micrometers and then install them, measure the lash, and then I have a calculator that I use that lets you move things around and you can like input your lash and what your target gap is, and it will tell you what your new shim has to be. So we're gonna measure first, assemble, put cams in it, spin them around, measure lash as we go, document that, pop over to our Excel spreadsheet, do the math, and then order the right shims or swap them around, and your head will be assembled. So for starters, I'm gonna show you how to measure. There's a couple ways you can do it. I'm gonna show you my preferred method, and then we'll go along and get them installed. So these are the tools you're going to need, either one. Uh, I prefer micrometers, they're a little more fine, it goes down to the fourth decimal place. This goes down to three decimal places. You can get either of them from Amazon, and as long as you are consistent with what you use, you'll be fine. So I use these, and if I have any doubts, I just quickly verify with these. I'm not going to show you how to read these, there's plenty of good videos online on how to read a set of micrometers or calipers, but I'm going to show you what I measure. So. If you're using this, this is the fast method, right? So this is just a slide caliper. And then you take your shim, and then what you want to measure is the thickness across it. 
So this one is like one three zero. And if you're using, sorry, point one three zero. And if you're using one of these, you gonna open it up a little bit. It's a little tricky to do, but you want to slide it in, and then you want to grab the little thimble here. There you go. Slide it in so you're centered. Grab the little thimble and then just till it clicks. So this one reads one two, sorry one three o oh, five. So it's it's a little bit more accurate than that guy, but by point zero zero five it's off, which is fine. So. I use this for everything just because I have a full set of them and I like their accuracy, but what you're going to do is now go, you know, intake one through eight, exhaust one through eight, and then when you've got all your numbers, this might be a little messy for some of you guys, but I've got this book that I use. It's just like a notebook that's got all my engine build data in it. So, uh, you know, valve shim measurements, intake and exhaust, and then I've got my shim. So 0 0.1306 is what this one measured. I've gone through all eight down here, and then shim here, one through eight. And then when I assemble the head, I'm gonna put these all in the same spot and I'll measure the lash, and then I'll take this data and put this into the spreadsheet and we'll calculate what the output should be. So the next step with this is to set them in the head, which is super simple. I'll show you guys how to do that. There is no up or down on these. You'll see they have this little like circle on them. I think that's just for machining and then yeah, it's cool. I didn't want that open. And then the other side just looks smooth. Just for consistency, I always put this smooth side up and I put the circle side down. Don't think it really matters, but it's just a good way to just keep everything the same and it looks nice and all that. So let's pull the head over, set them all in, and then we'll get the camshaft in torqued and we'll be in our measurements. So we've got our head set out here. And what we're gonna do now is, remember this is the intake side and this is the exhaust side. This is the intake row and this is the exhaust row. So we're just gonna put these in in order and all you do is set them in there, give them a little press, and if you can spin them, they're flat. They're, if it's crooked, you'll know because it'll sit like that. You just gotta give it a little push and it kinda clicks into place. If you put it in perfectly, which is kinda hard to do, it will just slot in, Let's see if I can get it just like that and there's no click it's just because you're trying to like put it in at an angle so um, you're not gonna do any damage by pressing them in just like that so we'll go through the intake side and then we'll do the exhaust side so you can see I put no assembly lube underneath these um, there's a thin film of oil on the lifters, which is fine. That there's no need for like assembly schmoo underneath. So we'll just set these in real quick. And then you have all your lifters in your head, all your shims are in your head in the order that you wrote them down in the book. And the next step is to do the cam install. So what I'm gonna do, because when you put the cams in, you can push the valves down and you don't wanna push the valves into something hard. I'm gonna prop the front of the head up on like a block of wood, so I'll show you that. I have this two by four that has probably built 10 engines, but I'm gonna set it underneath the two little guys up front that hold on the timing cover. So I've got it set underneath these studs. It's pretty stable and it lifts the entire head enough that even the back cylinders when you put a cam in it does not push the valves into the table. So this is just an easy way instead of like trying to set it up on something else. If you have a block, like if you're assembling an engine, like these are all assembled and I will be doing the actual measurements on an engine block in the basement, but if you have a block, I suggest torquing it down to that just because I've seen the values get knocked around by about a thou and like rare cases, like on the end pieces, if you torque it down just because the aluminum head will kind of flex and settle. So if you're building an engine and you have the block, do this with it bolted to the block. Obviously it will be fine if you do it like this. A lot of people do it like this without issues, but uh, it's just that last extra tenth that might make a difference if you're building like a race motor. So. I'm gonna show it to you on the table. 
and it's the same exact process. So next up, let's lubricate. We're gonna put some assembly lube all the way down and then we're gonna lubricate the cams, put the cams in and then we'll put the caps on and torque it all down. For assembly lube, uh, not sponsored, but I really, really like this stuff from Lucas. It's super tacky and it stays, so if you're building an engine that's gonna sit for a little bit, this stuff will stay with you while it's, you know, while it's just sitting there. So uh, I've had good luck with the Redline assembly lube as well. I just like that this comes in a little like squirty bottle so I don't have to physically go through and like apply lube to everything. So I'm just gonna shake it real quick. Make sure you get the front lobe as well. And then we'll sneak around and do this guy. And then what I am gonna recommend, you can do this with your finger, I do it with a brush. Just spread lube in all of the cam bearings. So I use these acid brushes. I just make sure you pull any loose fibers out of them first and then you can spread them around. You just want to make sure there's no like bare metal that the cam is going to touch. Not that we're not going to lubricate the cam as well. You can tell how tacky this stuff is. It just follows the brush everywhere. So here's the intake cam. I'm going to do the same. We're just going to run a bead. Not on the gasket surface up front, but we'll just put some on every lobe, just like that. Because we are going to be spinning this without oil supply to measure things, so a little sus here, but make sure you lubricate it all up. And then we're going to set that in. I like to set it in a position, which I will tell you in a second. So the most neutral stance for it to sit is going to be where valves 1 and 2 are kind of pointing down towards the inside here and then valves 5 and 6 are pointing up. So it's just the way, it's obviously not going to sit flat because there's pressure from the valves pushing it up, but you don't want to have it like super cocked up. So I'm going to grab the in exhaust cam and we'll get that lubricated. And then we set it in. To kind of sneak it underneath the cam cap. You could take that off if you want. There's no real point, but this one likes to sit with valves one and two pointing pretty much straight up. It's just the most most balanced situation. And then what I'm going to do because we're going to put caps on it that are unlubricated is I'm going to take a little more and just dab it on top of all of the journal slots. Just like that. And then when we go grab the cam caps, we'll set them on in order. We'll do both. Just like that. And then I'm gonna drive these in with like a quick change impact just till the bolts are touching. I'm not gonna tighten the cams with those. So we'll do that, we'll bring them in slowly with a wrench once we're close. So this is very important. If you use one of these and you let it like trigger, like when you're tightening this down, you will cause metal shavings underneath the head of the bolt and that will fall into your engine and you're starting off your new build with metal shaving. So, what I'm gonna do is just start to drive them in until they touch the caps and then I will come just to, for speed and then I will come back with a wrench and bring them all in to touch and then we'll torque them down. What's important to note here, it doesn't really matter at the immediate moment, but when we go to tighten this down is the cam cap torque sequence. So you wanna start with the middle outside. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10. Kind of spiraling your way out so that you can apply pressure to the cam. If you do it the other way, you can actually break a camshaft, which nobody wants to do. So I'm gonna do it even with this, and then as we draw it in with the wrench, I'll do the same thing.
So you'll notice as I tightened it, I didn't go far enough to actually watch the camshaft move. If you're doing that, you're putting too much torque into the caps. I'm literally like, you know, quarter throttle just to get it to move instead of, you know, full speed. So if you're going to use that, do it carefully. Uh, I've done this way too many times. So I'm going to grab a ratchet now and drive them in. Not torque them in, but just drive them in. So same sequence. I'm just going until I know the cap is seated. And you will find some that are loose because as you tighten the cam, it just pulls the cam away from the cap. So proper sequence for this is obviously this spiral, but there's also steps. So we're gonna go to 125 inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds. And we're gonna do it in three steps. So we're gonna go from 60 inch pounds first, torque them all down, and then I'll jump up to like 90 inch pounds, torque them all down again, and we'll do the final at 125 inch pounds, torque them all down in the same sequence. So I have my wrench set at 60 inch pounds with a 10 mil on it, and we're just gonna go around and torque them all down. And then what I like to do at the end, just to be sure, is I leave it at 125 inch pounds and I go over them all one more time. So they shouldn't change, but just in case, we'll double check. And if anyone comes at you and tells you that using an extension modifies your torque value, um, they're wrong. So it would require a super skinny extension to actually act as a torque stick, which is a tool you can buy. I just did the spiral wrong, but it's okay. So, you know, using a deep socket or using, you know, an extension to reach it is not going to modify it, at least not the extensions that we're buying. So always make sure when you're done, back your torque wrench off. This one has a store at value of 10 foot pounds or 10 inch pounds. And the reason for that is there's a spring inside of here. And if you leave it set at a certain torque value, it wears a spring out and then this is no longer accurate. So this head is torqued. The next step is gonna be measuring our valve shims and you're gonna need one tool for this. Sorry, you're gonna need one special tool for this. This is a thickness gauge or a shim set. Just got it from Amazon. Uh, they're a little dirty, but I'll clean them off. So as you can see, it's got different values. So like this is 7 thou, 8 thou, 9 thou, 10 thou, etc. This goes from like point, point, sorry. This goes from one and a half thou to like 25 thou, I believe. So we'll cover the range of what we're doing here. Um, always clean them off before you stick them in if you've used them before because if there's like debris on there, you don't want it throwing off your measurement. So you'll see me wipe it down and then I'll go ahead and use them all. Intake should be 7, 0 0.007 to 0 0.009 inches. I know when I took this head apart because I measured it, it is not. It's out of spec pretty wildly. So you might have to hunt around so always make sure that the next step up, so if the 9 fits and then the 10 does not fit, you know it is 9 thou. If the 9 fits snugly but the 10 also fits, then you go up to the 11, and if the 11 doesn't fit, then you have 10 thou. So just sanity check because you don't want to go through all this, order all your shims, and then find out that one of them is out. The next thing you're going to need, you can use a cam gear and bolt for this if you want. Um, I use just the cam seal installer tool that I have from Fly Miata. Or you could just use a 14, you know, uh, an M8 bolt on the end here and turn it that way. I prefer using the tool, just gives me a nice little washer. This is going to have to use the 17 mil bolt from the VVT and then you'll use the uh, factory cam bolt for the exhaust side on the exhaust side. If you have a BP4W head, you can use the same bolt for both, but this is a bigger bolt. So let me grab the VVT bolt and my VVT seal installer and we'll get them assembled. All right, so I have my VVT seal installer tool from Flying Miata, and I've got my and I've got my regular cam seal installer tool from Flying Miata, both of them on here. And then what I use to turn it over is just a big ratchet with a 17 mil for the VVT and then a 14 mil for the factory size or the normal size for BB4W. Make sure when you do this, you brace the head because it's gonna wanna rotate as you rotate the cam. If for whatever reason the camshaft like does not rotate no matter how hard you push on this thing, stop and check to make sure you put all of your cam caps on in the proper orientation. I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, on this head, it actually goes, so it'll say like 
E2, E3, E4, E5, and it's stamped into the top of the cam cap. And it reads, in this case, as if I was reading it from the back of the head. So the E is actually like this way, like that, instead of what I would ex assume is reading it from the front. So it's a little opposite of what you'd expect, so just pay attention to it. But the cams should rotate pretty freely. So you can see that one actually rotates kind of nice. So I know all those caps are installed correctly. If you put them on backwards, the cam will not turn. So why are we turning the cam? You have to measure lash when the cam lobe is facing away from the lifter bucket so that the base circle of the cam is at the top of the lifter bucket. So it's very easy to visualize once you see it. Uh, it's not pointing directly up and down because these cam buckets are at like a 22 degree angle. So I'll show you this one. This one is now facing the right way. I'll show you what that looks like from the back so you can kind of see it. And then there is some leeway there. You can kind of be around as long as you're not on the part where the cam starts to like lift up. So I'll take you there right now. So flat to the head, you can see the cam lobes are pointing that way. And that's pretty in line with the angle of the bucket. So that's what you're looking for. So that's what you're looking for. And so I'll measure valves seven and eight first. And then I'll spin this over and then we'll get, looks like valves three and four, and then one and two, and then lastly five and six. So just make sure when you write it down, you realize that you're not doing one through eight, you're doing it in a weird order. So I have my shims cleaned off. I've got seven through 10 cleaned off right now. I'll probably need a few others, but I'm gonna start with seven and I will work my way up. And you'll know, like if you put the seven in and it just slams right in, you could probably skip a couple steps. So let's start with number eight. And what you're doing with this is you are inserting it on top of the shim bucket. Sometimes, so the smaller the shim, there we go. The thinner the shim, the easier they bend when you install them. So sometimes they need a little side guidance. So this actually fits very well. The seven fits very well back here. But like I said, we're gonna verify with the eight. So it is definitely at least a seven. And the eight does not go in. So this, so valve number eight on the intake side is seven thousandths, which is in spec. So I'm gonna write that down. And then we'll go to number seven here. So seven fits here. Eight fits here, a little snug, but eight fits. So again, with some guidance, eight fits in there and moves around nicely. And then I doubt it, but we'll double check nine because we want to be sure. So nine does not fit. I'm pushing pretty hard. It's worth noting, if you push super, super hard, it will fit because you will actually compress the spring. So, you know, kind of give it a little bit of a good test, but don't go super crazy. So I know this is seven thousandths, this is eight thousandths, so I'm gonna write those down in my book, and then we will rotate the cam and move on to the next one. So I've got it written down. So here we've got intake seven and eight, intake valve seven and eight, and then valve eight is seven thousandths, valve seven is eight thousandths. Now what we're gonna do is rotate it over until we get to the next one, which should be three and four by the looks of it. So that's about right. And we're gonna do the same thing over and over again, 16 times until we have it. So we'll start with seven. And it's worth noting, make sure you don't have double stacked because these are very thin. It's very easy to get confused and think that that's nine when in reality it's 19 because it's nine and 10. So now what I'm gonna do Although we're done with this side, I'm gonna spin it over until it's in a pretty neutral state. And a, a good rule of thumb is to set it up so that it's in time. So I'm gonna spin the cam over until these front two lobes are pointing that way. Cause that's TDC for the cam. And you, you wanna make sure you're not in like one of these spring loaded sections. So you'll, you'll hear it like switch over and now these cams are pointing in the general the right direction and they are not fully loaded so none of these buckets they're all a little compressed but none of them are like sticking valves straight out so let's do this side uh, might be a little easier to see I'll move the camera so you're looking straight down on it and I think we'll find one on this side so I'm gonna rotate the cam over uh, looks like one and two are gonna be our first 
Again, brace the head, especially now that you're on this side. It's going to want to rotate pretty easy. So those are in position. And this side, the exhaust side, we are looking for 11 to 14 thousandths. Or 11 to 13 thousandths, sorry. So we've got 11, 12, 13, and 14, just like we had 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm going to give these a quick little wipe, just to make sure they're clean. And again, we're going to start with 11. So cylinder one, or valve one, 11 is tight. Does not want to go on either one. So we're actually going to have to step down. So we'll go down, um, we'll try 10. 10 fits there, 10 fits there. So this guy's a little tight, but that's good because then I can show you the calculations to get that right. So similar to this side, I'm going to spin this over until it's in this in an unreleased state but what I'm actually gonna do here is put it in the state that we assembled it in because I know that's like its most neutral seating and that was with valve one and two pointing pretty much straight up so we're gonna have to take this out when we get new shims but for now we can leave it assembled and we'll put a valve cover on it or a bag to keep it safe the next thing we have to do is do some math and figure out what shims we need to swap out for this piece so what you've got here is a shim calculator. I got this from Greg Peters at the Car Passion channel. It's on his website. I'll put a link in the description and you can download it and edit it from his website. You have to download it to edit it. And the only modification I've done is this exhaust valves column here because we're not doing intake valves. So I just added these two columns and then exhaust valves one through eight. And then this is just where I'm gonna write in the output of this calculator here. So these are the inputs that we need to edit. So this is the lash we measured. This is the shim thickness that we measured. And this is the desired lash. So for the exhaust side, we want somewhere between 0 0.00, or sorry, 0 0.011 to 0 0.013 is the target. And I'm just gonna shoot for the middle of that range. So we're gonna put in here 0 0.012 thou, and then we'll start with exhaust valve one, which in our case was measured at 0 0.010, and the shim that we had measured was 0 0.1280. So we need a 0 0.126 shim, and then if you want, we can put the metric over here, or we can just do equals this times 25.4, which will convert it to metric for you. And we will actually follow that whole column down. And do three figures. So this is metric, shim. Uh, a lot of sites sell their stuff in metric only, so we will just have that there. So next up, is number two, which measured also at 0 0.01, and our existing shim was 0 0.126. So we know we need a 0 0.124 shim there. And then, since we have a 126 and we need a 126, I'm gonna put a note here that says takes take valve two shim, so we don't have to buy that one. So, Moving on, I'm just going to cut through all of these and I'll show you where we're at at the end. So here we've got our final required shims and there's a spreadsheet we can pull these from and you can also compare to your current list kind of like we did with number one to see if you have any of these just sitting. It's quite possible you have some you can interchange. In this case, I actually do not around these seven columns here. So I'm going to have to order seven shims to make this engine in spec. So then the next thing you're going to want to do is take your shim measurements that we just calculated and I also got the sheet off of Greg's website so the whole link will be down below. Nissan, Toyota, and Mazda or Toyota, Nissan, Mazda all have the same 27 millimeter shims. Some of them just have a wider range so you can see Mazda ends here at 2.75 for a minimum where Nissan goes to 2 millimeters and then, you know, there's just some more fidelity in some of these than others. 
I find it easiest to use Mazda and get close enough and you can just call your local dealer and they can have it for you in like the next day. So they obviously don't have the perfect value here for like, you know, we're looking for 1248. They have 1239 and 1258. So what we're gonna do is pick the one that's closest as long as it is within a thou. So uh, decimal place, skip the first two, and then so the three in this case, so one, two, three, nine, that's a thou. So we're looking for one, two, four, eight. So one, two, five, eight would be within a thou, and one, two, three, nine would be less than a thou. So really the best bet here is to use this part number because it is nine tenths. So we're gonna actually take that and I'm just gonna put it in my spreadsheet over here on my other screen. Uh, and then we're gonna go through and do the same thing. So one, two, four, is actually a tenth away from this one, so we're gonna use this one for that as well. And then we've got one, two, one, five, which is going to be five tenths away from one, two, two, so we're gonna use this part number. And we need two of those. And then one, one, nine, three is actually gonna be uh, nine tenths away from this one, so we're gonna use this guy here. And lastly, we need 1166, which is going to be half a tenth away from this one, so we'll use one of those. The benefit of going in the middle of the range with our values when we did the target number on the other spreadsheet is that we have a thou in either direction. So you have some play here to still be in spec, and you'll be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and order those part numbers from Mazda. So it's, I've got a total tally of seven shims that I have to order and I'll just order those we'll get them in stock and then we will swap them into the engine we're back to finish shimming the head shims have shown up it's been about a week I ordered all my shims from Cox Mazda I'll put the link down below they're uh, based out of Florida but they stock a lot of this stuff because Steve who is the parts guy is a Miata guy and he is the plug so I'm gonna show you what I've done uh, kind of how they show up and how I prep for all this and then we'll swap them over and that'll be it so the head is back on my little block of wood there. And then here's all the shims. I'll get to that in a second. They come in these little baggies and some of them look like super dated, but they come in the little baggies. And then what you can do is either cross-reference the part number, which is here to that list that we looked at earlier. Or what I do is I individually mic each one and then I get the actual value of what it is. And then you'll take this value and then you'll compare it to the list from earlier and you'll figure out which shim goes in which location. So these are all valve locations, one through eight. For valve number one, I'm actually gonna take the shim from valve number two and put it in there because it's the right one. So instead of buying another $10 shim or whatever. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, we'll just get their prospective shims. So intake side is good. We will take the exhaust side out and we're just gonna go through and pluck all of the shims out and we're gonna make this little switch here. And then the rest of the shims, if you do this often, you can keep them. I, I have like a bag full of shims. They just, none of them are the right size. And then it's as easy as dropping these in, putting some assembly lube on them. And then we're gonna spin the cam around and measure each one just like we did earlier to get our proper data for this. So like obviously intake side was all good. Exhaust side, we want to be between 11 and 13 thou. So obviously these were all bad. We're going to do that switch and measure, make sure they're all good. And if they are, then this head is ready to go on the car.
At this point, I'm going to skip it in the video because we've done it a bunch of times, but we're going to go through the torque sequence. I'm going to torque this whole thing down. Remember, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Three stages. I do 60, 90, and 125 inch pounds. And then we will spin it around and measure it. So everything is set up. Got my shims. These are torqued. Got this on here, and I'm just going to blast through real quick. Shim them all out just like earlier, so we have 11 thousandths. And we are good there. And it feels, that was 11, 12 feels like it won't fit, barely. So we'll check with 13, make sure we're not over. 13 doesn't fit. So, good here, and I'm just going to repeat that all the way down the line. And I've already checked number one, so. Cam is back in, everything has been checked, I spun it over a bunch of times. Make sure everything's seated. If it spins over really hard all of a sudden, make sure that one of the shims hasn't just like popped out. It happens every so often. You can kind of guide it back in with a flathead screwdriver. The spring will compress. Uh, obviously don't like push on the cam or anything like that. Just kind of wedge it against the cylinder head and you can kind of pry it back in. Or you can just pop the camshaft out, set it back in place, torque it all back down. But, it's, but it works totally fine with a screwdriver. So that's kind of, you know, the couple times it happens, that's how I do it. But now everything is in spec. This head is good to go, which means we can start putting it back together up front so like if you're doing this at home now you can put your cam seals in you can put your front like coolant neck and stuff like that on he's gonna get a turbo feed which if you're a turbo guy and you want coolant feed I saw these little guys that bolt up there and you can feed your turbo with a 6an fitting so he's gonna get that and then uh, but yeah this head is good to go if you have your block ready you can set this on your block and it's ready to party so it's that simple a lot of times this goes unchecked. I can't tell you the amount of engines that I get in from people that come out of a running car or have just been built uh, and and your shims are way out. I've had shims at 17 thou, I've had shims at 20 thou, I've had shims where yeah, I can't get a measurement because it's actually too thin and there is no gap anymore, which is another problem. You, you need to like swap shorter shims out at that point until you can create a gap if that happens to you. Uh, that might be happening if you have a misfire because the valve is never closing because there is no gap. A couple things to just keep in mind there. This is a good service item if your car's got like 60K on it. Just pop the valve cover off, spin it over. You can do it with the engine timed. Just spin the crank over and you can check them all and then you'll know, you know, you want to take anything apart really unless something is out of spec. So just a worthwhile thing to check. And if you are trying to convert your car to shim under bucket, Actually, the next video, it's already filmed, but the video after this one will be a shim under bucket, kind of a cheater way to measure before you order so you know what you need. And I'll be posting that sometime in the next couple days here. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I know you guys really seem to like these technical videos, so I'm going to try to keep them coming. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Let me know what else you want to see down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.